What's up everybody, Steven Z Killer here bringing another reaction. Now this reaction is another Cartoon Fight Club fight and it's in a reaction stream as you guys can see. Uh, this is episode 328, Ganon vs. Chaos. Legend of Zelda vs. Skylanders. So, two things. Off the bat, I'm going to choose Ganon over Chaos because I know Ganon more. I don't know anything at all about Skylanders. I know it's a like a little mini figure game and everything and it's like it's quite popular but I just it's never been something I've been interested in. So I don't know anything about this character. They are I'm guessing both evil assholes and uh, this was also requested by several people in the chat and also in comment sections that have been wanting me to check out this episode of Cartoon Fight Club, so I'm going to definitely check this one out. Alright, let's get into this and uh, enjoy this video by Animation Rewind. Right? Oh yeah, and like the original video and subscribe to the channel. Link down below in the description. Go show your support. Alright, and enjoy this right now. To go up against Ganon. Nonsense, fool! That's the spirit. We got a very special episode of Cartoon Fight Club for you, starring special guest and co-host, your favorite Canadian YouTuber. Oh shit! He got to co-host in this. That's nice. Birthday, August first. So you better wish him a happy birthday if you see him. Happy birthday, Canadian YouTuber! I, just, I saw your comment the other day. <laughs> on the loud side. Turn that down a little bit. What does it take to be a true villain? Well, you could ask Robbie Rotten, or you can ask tonight's fighter. Has there All right. been a villain? Oh! Let's get back into this. I'm talking Ganon versus Chaos. So, Animation Rewind, after all these years, you finally decided to put a Skylanders character in Cartoon Fight Club, huh? Well, if you're really doing this, then you're gonna need someone with true Skylanders expertise to help you cover this fight, and that will be me. Well, if by expert. Well, I know you put, like, Canadian YouTuber pushes sure Skylanders uh, fights Skylanders towards me all the time, but it just doesn't what? interest me. I don't wank but at least I'm hoping, so I'm. I'm just hoping Ganon can kick this guy's ass. Well, I, uh... Well, what about Knuckles versus Terrafin? I'm pretty sure I... Or Gearshift versus Android 18. Okay, first of all, Gearshift lost that fight. Second, don't you think this is a little off topic? All right, fine. <laughs> if you want to cover the analysis for Chaos, then be my guest. Just don't get carried away with the stats, all right? <sighs> don't worry, I won't. Now, with all that being said, let's introduce Cartoon Fight Club's next round of fighters. Oh, wait, wait, Brian, wait! Now let's watch a whole bunch of ads. Oh. Hmm, aren't you a might puny to go up against Ganon? Nonsense, fool! That's the spirit! It's been quite <laughs> a while since Ganondorf has been on Cartoon Fight Club. While this isn't his first appearance... I don't remember the last time he's been on the fight. And ...that was two years ago, back when he faced Aku. But now Ganondorf... It's Roblox, but worse. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a uh, yeah. Nah, I'm not into those type of games. Ganondorf is the reincarnation of the Demon King Demise, who is the living embodiment of hate and evil. After Ganondorf has stolen the Triforce of Power, he gained near invulnerability, immortality, and immense power. Ganondorf has attempted many times to take over Hyrule and claim the other two pieces of the Triforce, but always finds himself constantly defeated by a certain heroic blonde elven warrior and her little green sidekick. Ganon is a oh! to reckon with. He has many powers and abilities, plus forms throughout many incarnations, all with similar effects and properties, including dark magical attacks, shadow manipulation, weather manipulation. I play I played Ocarina of Time growing up. This was one of my favorites. Control, transmutation, portal creation, summoning minions, resurrection, 
deadly curses, and much more. Ganon is a master swordsman, often wielding one or two at a time, and his skills even rival that of Link. He's also hey, someone someone's on my side with Ganon. As well. He is very intelligent, cunning, and clever, and often shows no mercy on his opponents. Ganon has also shown some very impressive physicality, as he's strong enough to shatter large pillars with ease, kill ancient sages with his bare hands after getting impaled, survived castles falling on him multiple times, can dodge Damn. Blank arrows, and while he is technically slower than Link, he is able to be on par with him, which should make him at least relativistic. When it comes to Ganon's level of destructive capability, he is considered a large multi-continental threat at base, and while fully utilizing the Triforce of Power, he can reach at least planetary levels, if not greater. Also, if he gains all three pieces of the Triforce, okay. he can utilize them on a high universal reality warping wish. However, because Ganon will only have the Triforce of Power for this battle with no prep time, that ain't happening. Now, if you thought Ganon was a powerhouse in just his base form, Hey, the Canadian YouTuber's actually here. What's up, man? Transformation, such as Dark Beast Ganon, Calamity Ganon, and his most iconic Warlock Pig Demon form, which has came in quite a few shapes and sizes throughout the series. In all these forms, Ganon becomes much more violent, destructive, and animalistic, often relying on brute force rather than strategy. But while still yeah, that is true. A basic skill to dual wield giant blades. Now as impressive as Ganon truly is, he's not without his weaknesses. Ganon is extremely arrogant and egotistical to the point where he sees himself as a god and often underestimates smaller opponents who he presumes as weaker than himself. Some of his attacks can be reflected back and used against him, and he relies more on strength than speed, which explains why he's so slow in Super Smash Brothers. Ganon is heavily vulnerable to divine holy weapons, light arrows and light based weapons, and magic of the gods. While Ganon is not completely immune to normal weaponry as some may believe, as he can eventually be put down by normal weaponry or physical means, holy weaponry is still the most effective way of defeating him. Though he yeah. survived being impaled by one before, so putting him down might be quite tough. Overall, Ganon is He's a, got a lot of defense. versatile opponent, and he is known as Scrooge of Hyrule for a good reason. Better pay Ganon some respect, or else you will die. <laughs> Ah, oh, fucking A. Bum, bum, bum. Me! Chaos? And in case you foolish human fools haven't figured it out yet, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> From one supreme villain to another, let's Damn. I feel bad for everyone in the uh, stream. Sorry about that. I did not know that was coming up. Now allow me to take it from here. In Skylands, a magical world of wonder and adventure, legendary heroes known as Skylanders defend their world from all evil that threatens it, and their greatest enemy of all is the notorious Dark Portal Master known as Lord Chaos. Now, Chaos's origin story is not exactly well known. Some say Chaos was born a prince. Some say he was the son of an evil sorcerer. While rather if Chaos was born a villain or made a villain is unknown, we do know that when he becomes bad, Chaos is one of the baddest there is, and his destiny was to rule Skylands. He has made many attempts to take over Skylands and even practically succeeded at one point, but no matter how close he was to victory, the Skylanders always found a way to defeat him. While there are times when Chaos may seem like an incompetent fool, seems like a common trope. <laughs> easily clever than he seems. He can also be a lot more cruel-hearted than he seems, as he once abandoned his own mother for his own selfish gain and left her trapped inside a magic mirror for eternity so he can rule Skylands for himself. I mean, you can't get any more cruel and selfish than that. Can't argue with that. Anyway, Chaos is a very skilled and versatile fighter, as he possesses all ten battle classes which means he can utilize any form of weaponry from blades to hammers from arrows to firearms chaos also possesses all 10 elements of skylands including magic well, i wonder what his water, destructive earth, air, water, abilities water, are and defensive water, abilities and, dark, and can use them to perform many different elemental attacks chaos also possesses many other powers and abilities including telekinesis levitation teleportation shape-shifting mind control summoning minions creating portals shooting black lightning, summoning doom sharks, 
his iconic giant floating head, and many more. Now, don't judge a book by its cover, as Chaos is a lot tougher than he looks. While Chaos may not exactly be a muscular powerhouse, he can still physically take down tough opponents like Wolfgang, and even pimp slap Spyro the dragon, quite literally. He's also a lot faster than he looks, as he's capable of dodging magic blasts, lightning, lasers, and light-based attacks. Chaos is also very durable, as he survived being in the center of the Mount Cloudbreak eruption, which is the most powerful volcano in in all of Skylands with over 100 years of magic building up inside it. If we compare this to the most powerful volcanic eruption in Earth's history, aka the Krakatoa eruption, this means Chaos can survive a destructive eruption equal to 200 megatons of TNT. Now, exactly That's not bad. Powerful is Chaos in his base form. Well, Chaos is not bad at all. Enhanced by his supposed father, Chaos single-handedly defeated all of the Doom Raiders, and his potential power possibly even rivals the Dragon King, who is considered a large planet buster. In fact, not only does Malfour actually fear the name of Chaos's father, but when Chaos threatened to strike Malfour down, if he didn't hand over Spyro, Malfour didn't hesitate, fight back, or refuse, which may indicate that Malfour actually believed that Chaos was more powerful than him, although there is no direct confirmation on that. Now, if you thought Chaos was a powerhouse in his base form, he becomes far more powerful in his other forms. While Chaos has gained many forms throughout the Skylander series, from his evil eyes form to his Archean robot form he got after finding the Iron Fist of Arcus, his two most powerful forms of all would easily be Trapped. But he grows Chaos hair in his in his Chaos. higher form. Chaos Just realize that Chaos achieved after absorbing and harnessing the power of Traptanium, a magical crystal that was said to be virtually indestructible, which was confirmed in the Skylanders comics. Think of it as like adamantium but it's a crystal instead of a metal anyway it has also been stated multiple times that treptanium has infinite power which makes treptanium chaos's power potentially limitless hold on a second there chaos has infinite power are you sure you're not overstating him just now <laughs> i said his power was potentially limitless i did not say he was omnipotent i meant to say that chaos could continuously charge himself up with more and more energy and there's no defined limit to how much he can generate think of it this way imagine a superman Man had a small portable blue star inside his pocket at all times and could continuously recharge himself whenever he wants and that's pretty much the best way i can explain it anyway in this form so chaos is just like krillin <laughs> Traptanium blades charge up and heal himself and he even has fourth wall awareness and possibly even fourth dimensional senses as he can actually see the player slender right versus the gogeta gogeta would easily win to them through the portal of power he can briefly take control of the player's controller and when he tried to grab the player and pull him through the screen he instead pulled he's in got no master sword that is true from the real world oh and let's not forget that chaos is the reason why this very episode exists because chaos himself told animation rewind to put him in cartoon fight club oh and as for you animation rewind put me chaos in cartoon fight club or you shall also beat an equally horrible doom <laughs> <laughs> oh don't worry i haven't forgotten you wouldn't make me forget. Anyway, as impressive as this is, it still pales in comparison to Chaos's most powerful form of all, Super Chaos. After Chaos freed the Ancient Brain, who is one of the Ancients, aka the gods who created the Skylanders universe, the Brain taught Chaos everything he knows about mind magic. Mind magic is the most powerful type of magic in all of Skylands, as it's basically the same kind of magic the Ancients used to create the entire Skylanders universe. When the Brain taught Chaos how to use the power of mind magic to its full potential, he helped Chaos achieve an all-new godlike form known as Super Chaos. In this form, Chaos unleashes the full power of mind magic and essentially becomes a god. Okay, no offense, but that's starting to sound like a little wankage to me. Also, doesn't Chaos need outside help from the ancient brain in order to use his Super Saiyan Blue ripoff form? Well, oh, roasted! <laughs> the brain did help Chaos achieve this form. Chaos can still maintain this form on his own without any more help from the brain, even after the brain decided to abandon Chaos and join the Skylanders because he felt that the Portal Master had a much better imagination than Chaos, which is essential when using mind magic because with mind Mind magic you can create literally anything just by thinking so because chaos isn't very creative and has a very limited imagination it kind of hinders his ability to do whatever he wants with it however he can still use his power very destructively as well as warp reality to a minor extent now because chaos can use the full power of mind magic at the ancients level and the ancients are once again the creators of the skylanders universe this puts super chaos's full maximum potential at a universal level of power 
Well, as far-fetched as that may sound, I guess the way it's explained sort of makes sense. However, as impressive as you make him out to be, Chaos clearly has his flaws and isn't without his weaknesses. For starters, while Chaos is not an idiot, he's quite naive, slightly gullible, and sometimes acts like a child. Well, it pains me to say it, but you're right. Not only that, but Chaos is incredibly egotistical, stubborn-headed, a bit of a narcissist, prone to using the word doom a lot, and both his short temper and inferiority complex can often get the better of him, which may be one of the reasons why he always loses to the Skylanders. However, despite all this, Chaos is still one of the most dangerous and feared villains throughout Skylands, and no matter how many times he fails, he won't give up until all those who oppose him will meet their ultimate doom. It's just getting bad out there. All right, now, let's see how this fight goes. As a, as of watching everything so far, I'm still on Ganon's side. So I'm on Ganon's side because I know the character better, and uh, I think Ganon still could pull the win here. Get ready for the fight. This battle will take place on Earth, and remember, there is no prep time. Let the battle begin. The fuck? Rumble! Okay, that was an interesting way to enter the battle. Ooh. Oh, he's going already to his pig form. Damn. The fuck? Okay, that was a big fucking change. Oh my god, are you really doing the Scar and Bufasa moment? Oh my god, you got Knuckles, what? What, what is even going on? That wasn't even much of a fight. Ooh. Hopefully you enjoyed that animation, and if you did, super special thanks to Team Animation Rewinds, your favorite Canadian YouTuber, for animating half the battle, covering all the research on chaos, writing the script, and co-hosting the episode. He's got his own versus series known as Show Off Showdown, which has recently posted the season one finale. You should go check it out. It's also his birthday today, August 1st, so you better wish him a happy birthday. Thanks, and enjoy the post analysis. Uh, happy birthday, bed. Late, belated. And the winner is Chaos, though I am a tad skeptical on whether or not the Canadian YouTuber was biased towards Chaos in any way. No offense, I, I really feel really like it was. Mind. Personal bias had no influence on the outcome, as I solely stuck to facts only. Alright, I'll take your word for it. For now, at least. Now, I will start off by saying that if this was just a base battle, then it is very likely that Ganon would have won, as not only is he physically superior to Chaos, but also has greater attack potency as well. But then factoring in their stronger forms, it's a whole different story. Not only is Chaos faster than Ganon and would be oh my God. maneuver most of the attacks, <laughs> but Chaos and Ganon have a lot of very similar powers and abilities, most of which would likely cancel each other out in more ways than one. Also, because this battle has no prep time, there's a good chance that Ganon will likely underestimate Chaos, as he doesn't really look like much of a threat when you take your first look at him. Now, we could sit here debating back and forth on different minor possibilities, but let's just cut to the chase and talk about both characters at their absolute peaks.
As mentioned earlier in the pre-analysis, Ganon in his base form is physically a large multi-continental threat, and his larger and more beast-like forms increase his attack potency even further. And when Ganon fully utilizes the Triforce of Power, he is at least a planetary threat, if not greater. However, even this type of power won't be enough to compete with Chaos's super forms. Okay, now before anyone says Chaos can't kill Ganon because he doesn't have any holy weapons or whatever, we've already explained that Ganon is not strictly immune to all types of weaponry aside from holy weapons. Ganon can be killed through physical means, though it would be a lot harder to do so. However, because Chaos's Traptanium Blades are virtually indestructible and could slice through almost anything, and not to mention they're crackling with limitless energy, I highly doubt even Ganon's toughest armor would be able to withstand that. Now for those of you who are still pondering about Ganon's weaknesses, Chaos might actually have the right weapons to take Ganon down. While Chaos doesn't necessarily have any quote-unquote holy weapons per se, let's not forget Ganon is also vulnerable to light arrows and light weaponry, which is something Chaos could create as he can magically summon any weapon he wants huh. and he possesses all 10 elements including the light element which means he can perform light elemental attacks so it's very likely that that's kind of true okay light elemental weapons to use against ganon and let's not forget super chaos which is not only far more powerful than ganon but surprisingly is also the most effective form to use against ganon as ganon is also vulnerable to divine god magic and Chaos in his super form is basically utilizing the full power of the same magic used by the ancient gods who created the Skylanders universe. You can't get more godly than that when it comes to god magic. So Super Chaos wouldn't just obliterate Ganon with raw power alone, but also the same kind of power that Ganon is most vulnerable to altogether. Now we could argue that Ganon could just resurrect himself after death, as he has done every time he's died in the past, but not only would he have a really hard time coming back after getting annihilated with such power, but even then his first defeat should count as a technical win regardless, making the winner of this battle, Chaos. Now this time, let's actually give Ganon a chance here. If you want to see a prep time rematch where Ganon has all three pieces of the Triforce, all you have to do is... Oh, so Ganon didn't even have all three pieces of the Triforce. I didn't know that part. Okay. See, I was thinking he was going to have more than just his own piece. Okay. This fight's going to be interesting. That one is coming up next in the stream. So, let's just put that over here. Close that one. Alright. So, yeah, it does make sense. If Ganon had all three pieces of the Triforce, he would have pretty much, I would say he would have won. It, very, it seemed very downplayed, and that animation was super fucking weird and short. But, um, yeah. All right.